Hello, in today's video, we will be looking at this. Now this is the Ring Wireless Alarm. I've actually had it for quite a while and I just haven't got around to unboxing it. So what we'll be doing in this video is unboxing it and then we'll install it and uh, have a little play and see how it works. Now, uh, you might know that I already have a few ring bits and bobs around the house, so this should all integrate really nicely together with it. Um, but yeah, I'm just very excited to see what we've got and then get it installed. So this pack comes with the following. It comes with the base station, it comes with a door sensor, it comes with a motion sensor, it comes with a range extender, and also it comes with a keypad. Now you can buy additional contact sensors and motion sensors and stuff like that, which I've got a couple more of, but this is just sort of the standard base kit. Now something they also have are outdoor sensors. So uh, if you've got a back garden gate and a shed like I have, that would be something that you can also add. So I might consider adding that at a later date. If you've got those, then drop a comment because I'd like to know how they are and how they work really. And also I do apologize if you can hear any noises outside. They are building houses directly behind me, so there is a bit of noise. Right, there we go, always home. We've got some sort of documentation here. We'll come back to that. So this is the base station, and this is what connects to the internet and needs power. And also, I believe uh, it can have a cellular backup, so you can actually put a special SIM in this, and if your internet goes down, it can still uh, carry on working. I like this kind of thing. It's a template for putting it up on the wall. Um, that's awesome. And now we have the keypad. Now I think I'm correct in saying that the keypad can be battery powered and also mains powered. Where I'm thinking of putting it is probably going to just need battery power. So I hope that is the case. And um, yeah, it's got various buttons. We'll investigate those later on in the video. And then further down, We've got the accessories. Oh, look at that. I like the way that's laid out. So you've got the base station power adapter, the range extender, the motion detector, and the keypad adapter, as well as this, which are UK plugs. <laughs> Perfect. And also you've got EU plugs. And then right at the corner down here, we've got these contact sensors. Look at that. So these are what go on your doors and windows to protect them. They're so little. Well, we'll get the main guys out. We don't really need to look at what power adapters look like. Well, not right now anyway. Okay, so there is our base station. So it has an ethernet port. It's got a USB port. It's got a input for five volts DC. Got a pairing button and um, some sort of uh, indicator lights here and also a recessed reset button and then here is our keypad very nice so it's just got a bracket that fixes onto the wall and then it slides into place and on the back don't know if you can see that there but that is a micro usb thing so uh, it's obviously micro usb powered now i did say that this might be battery powered but I can't actually see any means of putting batteries in so that could be incorrect and I might have to think about where I'm going to place this. Hmm, we will see. Before I look at all the accessories it would be really awesome if you don't already to subscribe to my channel. Subscribing is completely free you just hit that subscribe button and also if you want to get notifications of when a new video goes up just hit the bell that would be really helpful to make this channel grow and this is a range extender so it does what it says on the tin basically it extends the range of the system so i'll probably put one of these upstairs it really is as simple as that and we'll just get one of the uk plug adapters put it on there and plug it in and uh leave it to rock and roll. So here we have our motion detector. These are definitely battery powered. So these would obviously go into the corner of a room and uh, keep an eye for any motion. So there those are. And I think got little, yeah, so it's got little sticky pads on the back. And uh, I presume we pull this out 
when we want to start powering it up. And I think you can also screw it into the wall as well. It's fairly small, it's fairly inobtrusive, doesn't look terrible. Now this contact sensor, this is adorable. This is so tiny, which is quite good really because if you're putting these on your door and your window frames, you don't want them to be massive and look terrible. Look at that, that's really, really small. I like that. I think I read it's like about an inch away. So it doesn't necessarily, when your door's shut, it doesn't actually have to be physically touching. It can be a little bit further away. So if you've got angles or stuff like that on the edge of your doors or windows, it's not the end of the world, but we will see that in practice. Now you might think, well, where's the siren? It's an alarm, it should have a siren. It does have a siren inside this, um, but you can actually get an external wall mounted siren. Now you can either have that powered by batteries or if you have it mains powered, it actually has a cool glowing light that sort of glows at night and which you can turn on and off. Now that's probably something I am going to get eventually, but I don't have at the moment and I, I wanna get the wiring and stuff sorted out in the loft first. So I think the sort of traditional siren -y bell box would look quite cool. But yeah, there is the option of uh, having it battery powered and apparently the batteries do last quite a while, but I think something that's probably going to be so high up on the house, I would like to have mains powered. So it's worth bearing in mind, but this does make the noises as well. Now you can also set this up so it calls you in the event of an alarm, um, which is quite handy. Now that is part of the paid service. Now there is a subscription service for this. Yeah, so I'll put all the details of that on the screen at the moment. And I think that also includes the cellular backup as well, which I think having would be advisable. So the way I'm imagining this working is this will be tucked up in my comms cupboard, fixed to the wall with everything else. Um, I recently did a video on wall mounting my SkyQ router. I'll put a link to it up there. This will have to go somewhere near the front door. <laughs> and I imagine to kick off, I'll have one of these sensors on the front door itself and then maybe one on the back doors. And I've got a couple of these motion sensors as well, so there'll definitely be one in the hallway and one in the living room. So I'm not gonna show you exactly how every single thing is set up because I realize that is a bit of a security risk, literally showing you how you can get into my house and all that kind of gubbins. So uh, yeah, bear, bear that in mind. It might be slightly abridged. So what I think is best to do now is to uh, go downstairs, get this all plugged in and set up on my phone and just sort of lead you through that all together. Um, yeah, so uh, let's do that. Well, you join me in the comms cupboard and I'm installing the base station first. So there's the base station. And uh, on the wall over there are some screws that are four inches apart, which is like 10 point something millimeters. And uh, the base station is going to clip onto it. Um, there is cable routing on the back for the power. There we go, ethernet cable is plugged in. Just saves faffing around trying to find it on the top. It would be better if all the cables came out at the bottom really, because we've got some bottom entry and we've got some top entry which is annoying in mind so the other end of the ethernet cable needs to go into your router or basically any network socket that's connected to the internet so i have one here so let's plug the base station in and see what happens well it's plugged in oh yes look we have lights flashing on the top here there we go light has turned green so uh, let's go into the app and get it set up. Right, okay, so uh, I'll put my screen up on this side of the screen here so you can see my phone. So let's go into set up a device and uh, I suppose we want security. And then it is a ring alarm. Um, it's asking where the base station is. So that's my home address, which you can't see. Um, now it's asking us about this location. It's just a home. I've uh, chosen a good spot for the base station. Yep, done that. Okay, press the pairing button on the rear of your base station. I'll go and do that. 
So my ring is now illuminated and I'm going to click find my base station. Seems to have found it already. There we go. So we, oh, it can be set up via, via Ethernet or Wi-Fi. Ethernet is obviously better because that's a continuous cable connection. So yeah, we'll stick with Ethernet. Um, it is connected. Yep. The lights are already green. We saw that, didn't we? There we go. So the alarm's getting ready to connect to the internet. I imagine there's going to be a software update or like 30 to do once we've uh, done this bit, but so far so good. So far so simple. Now, obviously, if you're not already a Ring user, then you'll probably have to go through additional steps to get a Ring account, register your address and all that kind of stuff. There you go. My base station setup is complete. Well, that couldn't be any easier. Tap continue below. So now it's offering Ring Protect Plus, which is a paid for service. I think it's around eight pounds per month, um, which gives you assisted monitoring. And then it says in emergency, a signal is sent to Ring and we'll get you an automated call from our monitoring services. If you can't answer the phone, your trusted emergency contacts will also get automated calls so they can help. That's really good. Um, mobile backup. So it does have a SIM card already installed in it in the slot on the side. I noticed that when I was prepping it. So uh, that's quite handy. So if the internet goes down, the ring can still signal to my phone and do the automated calls and all that kind of stuff. So that is perfect. And it does also includes 30 days worth of video storage for doorbells and cameras. Again, helpful. Uh, extended warranties and discounts. They give you money off the Ring website if you're a Ring Protect Plus customer. And uh, we get a 30 day free trial. Now, I think I've already got, I think I already pay for this service because I have the cameras backed up to the cloud. So I think that is part of the Ring Protect Plus thing. So yeah, we'll get started. So uh, yeah, we need to agree to these terms and conditions, which we can do. Okay, so let's get you signed up for assisted monitoring. Okay, that's cool. Um, add your first emergency contact. That is me. That is my number. Um, we'll skip the additional contact for now, but that'll be Vicky, obviously. Congratulations! You've successfully signed up for assisted monitoring. You can now begin your using your ring alarm to protect your home. Well, we've got to get the keypad a door sensor and a motion sensor installed first. So I'll do that in a minute. Oh, okay, look at this. So you can add a ring monitoring to your contacts. So I'm going to do that now um, because that's, uh, that's handy. So when it comes up, it will say ring assisted monitoring. So I know, and I can also set it. So that defies my silence rules and stuff like that. Because obviously if your house is being burgled, you want to know about it. So there you go, it's doing an update at the moment. It's probably sending all my settings to it and uh, configuring it. So uh, let's just wait for that to happen. As ever with all the Ring stuff, it's been ever so simple to set up and install. It really is idiot proof. So even if you're a massive technophobe, you should be able to set this up relatively comfortably, hopefully. Actually, this is a really good time to say Please do give this video a thumbs up if you're enjoying it and also consider subscribing to the channel. I make lots of videos on lots of different things and uh, yeah, if you like this video, you're bound to like some of my other content, hopefully. There we go, Alexa saying my new security system's been discovered. So it clearly integrates quite nicely with Alexa, which is pretty cool. But it's still doing the configuring, configuring, but it's nice to see that stuff is happening. It's only taken a couple of minutes so far. It probably feels a lot longer for you lot. So it already knows about the stuff that was included in the rest of the kit. So we've got a contact sensor, we've got the keypad, we've got the motion sensor, and we've got the extender. Anyway, I need to install the keypad now. So uh, we'll come back in a second. The included uh, raw plugs were absolute bobbins. So I've just used some standard red ones instead. I'm using the screws that came with it, but yeah. The raw plugs are shocking. Right, moment of truth, does it fit? It does, excellent. 
Cool, let's get it set up in the app. Right, okay, so um, I've gone back into the app and it says uh, device added, tap here to finish setting it up. So that's cool, so let's do that. Let's set up your keypad. There we go. Uh, where will you place your keypad in? So it's going to be in the hallway. Um, let's call it hallway keypad. Makes sense. So this is interesting. I was confused as to whether it was battery operated or not. And basically it does seem to have a rechargeable battery in it. It's not one that's user replaceable. So it's not got um, any um, like AA batteries in or whatever, but yeah, you can basically put it wherever and charge it up with the supplied mains adapter if you want, or you can just have it powered by mains the whole time, but there's not really a socket around there to power it. So uh, we'll leave it as is. Choose your access code. Let's create one. So I've got to enter my access code. Now, obviously you can't see this bit. There we go. Your access code has been created. You'll need to use your access code to arm and disarm the alarm. Vicky can do it when she gets home. Okay, your keypad is ready to use. Next up, we need to install the contact sensor and uh, we'll do it right next to it on the front door. So let's do that. So this is our contact sensor. Um, it can be either screwed to the doors or windows or it comes with adhesive pads. So I'm gonna use those and Basically, the big part goes on the door and the little part goes on the frame. Well, actually, it doesn't matter which way, way round they go, but that makes the most sense because the door is the biggest and the frame is the smallest. So uh, let's get it installed. I think I've got to pull this tab out first as well. Oh, look, it's waking up. obviously doing its pairing thing. Oh uh, yeah, I can see my phone's starting to connect to it and everything, so, um, oh, there's a bleepy sound. Okay, well, I'm gonna get this on the door, and get it set up in the app. Okay, then we just need to install the other side. Cool, well that seems to be in position. And uh, yeah, it's asking me on my phone to finish setting it up, so let's do that. So let's set up your contact sensor. Uh, so that is the main door. When armed, there will be an entry and exit delay to reduce false alarms, perfect. So what room will you place your contact sensor in? It is in the hallway. And we will call it front door because it is the front door sensor. Okay, it's telling me not to put it on the side with hinges. Well, that's pretty obvious. Yeah, it's clean and dust free. Okay, so you can have it about two and a half centimeters away maximum. So that should be fine. There we go, we've done that bit. Open and close the door to test the sensor. This is where Dougie comes flying down the stairs. So hopefully, Yes. Perfect. Success, your contact sensor is ready to use. Let's uh, plug in the wave extender. That is literally just plugging it in, but um, yeah, I think I'll stick it. Okay, so now it's time to plug in our range extender, which is this guy. Um, I've just got to slide in the UK power plug dink, and then plug it in and now you can see my phone screen and it's saying adding device so it's doing all the flishy flashy stuff it's really good how like all the things from the box have just sort of worked together so there's no real faffing with pairing and everything I think additional accessories need pairing but um, yeah this seems to work fine so uh, Z wave extender, let's finish setting it up. Okay, so uh, it's sort of 
you basically choose where you think you should put it. It really depends on your house. Um, we put the extender in the hallway and we'll call it hallway. There we go. It's all set up and ready to go. That was really painless. Right, so we just got the motion sensor to do now. Hello. You join me through the bars of <laughs> my stairs and uh, I think I'm going to put the motion detector up here because it sort of gives a good view of the hallway um, and the kitchen and all that kind of stuff. So that is where I'm going to put this motion sensor that's come with this. So I've just got to pull out the tab and it's adding the device. I'm going to use the sticky pads to put this in position. You can screw it in position. It's got screw holes at the back. I'm just going to use the sticky pads for now. There we go. So um, let's just go through this. Taps are finished setting it up. There you go, so it's going to ask some questions. Um, it's going to be in an entrance hall and it's going to be in the hallway. And we'll give it a name, motion sensor. Because I've already got Philips Hue motion sensors installed for the lights, so just to differentiate them, I'm going to call it the ring one. So it should be mounted 2.3 meters away from the floor. Now I think our ceilings are about 2.4 meters, so that's fine. So um, in theory, I should just be able to pop it up here. So I'm just giving it a little press down. <laughs> I can't believe I'm peering through here. Now obviously if your walls are a bit dirty or whatever, or you know, you should, maybe give it a wipe down with some IPA or something first of all. Um, but because these are freshly painted walls, it should be okay. Um, do you want to test your motion sensor? No, we'll continue without testing. I trust it. Success, we're done. Right, I'm gonna move the camera and stop looking like I've been a naughty child. So uh, back in a second. So um, I'm just having a little look in the app and seeing how things work. Um, so at the moment, it's all set to disarm, which is helpful. Um, so what if we tell it I'm away? So it's giving me 60 seconds to leave the house. Never mind. 30 seconds remaining. 30 seconds remaining. Okay, so it's now armed. So in theory, um, motion on the motion sensor, which is up there behind me, should set it off. Now I don't have the external siren box, so it's just making the noise inside the house. Yeah. Okay. That is loud. That is very loud. <laughs> right, let's disarm it. Yeah, I don't know quite where all the sound is coming from, but that was really loud. Awesome. Okay, well, the thing is, I don't want to go into too much detail about how I'm setting everything up and how everything works because, you know, this video is going on the internet and this is my home. This isn't a studio. This isn't a mock-up. This is actually where I live. So I don't want, like, the full ins and outs of my security put on the internet. So, um, yeah, I'm not going to show you too much more. But it does seem to work, so that is good. So at time of filming, that alarm kit is actually £214. So um, yeah, that's a lot of money, but you know, what price is your home worth? A lot more than that. But it is also worth shopping around because the price does fluctuate quite a lot. And I think when we purchased it, it was around about the 150 pound mark. So just keep an eye out for deals and hopefully you'll be in luck and get it for a bargain price. But I think for now, I've got nothing else to say. So I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Please ensure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you give it a thumbs up. But for now, it's game over.